Hey guys, welcome back to the Hills Rewatch. I'm here with my co-host Brody Jenner and Frankie Delgado. And this is a very special bonus episode today. We have a very special guest, Whitney Port. And Whitney, this is really just, we wanted to talk to you overall about your experience and just catch up. Yeah, I'm so excited to do this with you guys. I mean, obviously I've like rewatched the Hills and I can't believe how much I don't remember. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I blacked out so much of that time in my life. I did too. <laughs> yeah. I, Ours was off alcohol, but yours yeah. was <laughs> No, no, no. Mine was different. I mean, my I was partying too. I was just in college. Like, I was just doing my own partying. But like, also, the it was such a crazy thing. I think I also blacked out because of just like how crazy it was. Like, you yeah. know, you like... It's your like emotions are on overload. Sure. Yeah, it is like certain scenes would happen. And then after you're like, I don't even remember what I said. Like, yeah, what just happened. Yeah. yeah. Or like, how is this going to be then chopped up? And like, what just happened there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So much questioning. So much like, like, w- who am I? Like, who, how am I going to be edited? Just like yeah. so much lack of control. Yeah. yeah. We've had a few of the producers on. Well, you had Sophia on Fun. and Jason Sands, Andrew Perry. So he kind of they gave us their insight and perspective and reminded us of things that I didn't even remember, which was always really interesting to hear. <laughs> oh my God. Like what? Just little things like Jason Sands was on last week and he's like, Adrena, remember, like, I don't even know what he said, but I was like, what? That was, oh, he's the one that put Justin's helmet next to me at the party. And I thought Justin really left or left his helmet Uh, there. But that was all kind of to get me to, you know, have a reaction. And I did give a reaction. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my God. I know. I mean, luckily for me, like on the hills, I was more. I was just like Lauren's buddy in the office, you know, I was like basically cast for her to have someone to come back to and tell what had happened. I think that was partly why the producers like weren't having me come out with you guys as much and like weren't inviting me because you see in shows now, like they always have that recap scene after with someone that wasn't there. Yeah. So I was like, pretty isolated in that way. Um, I also think like I kept my boundary because I wanted to be just like a normal college student. Um, but yeah, it was crazy. Cause like, I really only heard Lauren's point of view about things, you know, like I didn't really know what was going on. And did you ever watch the show back then? Like when the episodes would actually air? Yes. I would watch the shows. Remember they would get like delivered on Monday mornings or whatever. And then I would watch them that morning and then I would never, I never watched it again until recently. Yeah. Same. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cover of Rolling Stone, and uh, you were going to college, and how? So, how was that? Well, while, while you're walking in college, and you're <laughs> this rock star. It was on campus and saying hello to everybody. I'm sure you were a big deal, and that was probably everybody's favorite show. I, I have uh, friends of mine that were like in college that would say <laughs> all they did was Monday college. That was their thing to do. Watch. The yeah, show. yeah, yeah. I feel like it was a big college like audience. Um. It was just, I started doing The Hills my junior year of college. So, you know, it was getting big, like my senior year. And so I wasn't really like big woman on campus yet. You Um, You don't want to be asking, how did you get on? Like, how was... So, so I was actually interning uh, in the offices where Teen Vogue were and I was looking for, or they were hiring for interns at Teen Vogue, um, which was a different magazine than where I was working. And I applied for just like a regular internship. And then I guess they passed my app, my resume on to MTV, who they were working with to cast this show. And next thing I know, I get a call from MTV and they're like, we see you were, were interviewing for an internship at Teen Vogue. Like we're actually starting to film a TV show there would you mind doing a casting tape for us? And I was like, okay, I guess. Um, And I then just like did an at-home casting tape for them. And then the next thing I know, like my first day filming was 
I walked in for my interview with like our West Coast editor of Vogue and I'm sitting in the conference room and then in comes Lauren. And that's when I was like, oh my God, I'm like, I had no, I knew who she was from Laguna Beach. So I was like, oh my God, am I, is like Lauren getting a spinoff show that I'm now on? Like, holy <laughs> shit. And then, <laughs> this is getting filmed as this is happening? Yeah, but like they weren't, remember, they they never filmed that part of our lives, like the fame aspect or like anybody recognizing us. Like we were all all supposed to be like normal, regular like kids. Mm-hmm. So they weren't, They I don't think they wanted a storyline of me being like, oh my God, it's Lauren. But like they, yeah, that's the, the moment it clicked when I was like, oh, this is the type of show I'm like possibly going to be a part of because they had just pitched it to me like it was a show about four girls moving to LA all doing different things one in music one in nightlife you know a couple in fashion and um, I was like okay cool Okay, let's be honest, parents. Waking up feeling refreshed and being a parent to young children don't usually coexist. But with the Hatch Rest, peaceful, restful nights for the entire family can happen. With the Hatch Rest, your child will sleep better so that you can too. The new and improved second generation Hatch Rest makes sleep better and more magical for your entire family. The all in one Hatch Rest is a smart sleep device with a sound machine and nightlight that grows with your kids. So, Brody, as a future daddy, you are definitely going to need this hatch rest. It is awesome, man. The music is perfect. It's like got this, this, this white noise. It has little waves. It has, depending on what you want, especially for you guys, probably the waves is going to be the best sound for you. The waves. Yep. Yeah, you do. The rest has helped over 3 million babies and parents get restful sleep. It's no wonder that it's consistently a top baby registry item. So there you go, bro. I can give you one of these. I'll go buy you one for your baby shower. Thank you, Brady. <laughs> and right now, Hatch is offering our listeners up to 15% off your purchase of a Hatch Rest and free shipping at hatch.co slash hills. So if you're ready for improved sleep for your kids and yourself, go to hatch.co slash hills to get up to 15% off and free shipping. That's hatch.co slash hills. Guys, last year, rates of anxiety and depression have doubled in the U.S. That's concerning, but also not surprising. What makes it harder is that it can take months to get a traditional therapy appointment. And to add insult to injury, traditional therapy visits are on average over $100 per session. That can add up to thousands of dollars a year. Well, it's not all bad news. Let us tell you about Cerebral. Cerebral is a 100% online mental health service that offers therapy and medication management for anxiety, depression, insomnia, stress, burnout, and more. Cerebral is here for anyone who's looking for help with their mental health, no matter where you are in your journey. Cerebral helps people with anxiety, depression, stress, insomnia, and more. If you feel like you're experiencing burnout or processing a major life event, Cerebral is care that is ready for you. Tell us about Cerebral, Frankie. You use this, right? Yes, yes, I do. Cerebral has been quite great for my life. I actually suffer from a little bit of anxiety. I have insomnia sometimes and and definitely stress. And uh, this has definitely come in handy because it's so easy to do. It's affordable and you don't you don't feel like you're just like wasting money uh, with a little bit of therapy. So, yeah, Cerebral is the way to go for me. Yes, Cerebral is one of the few services that provides medication management online through a licensed provider if clinically indicated. Affordable treatments that are one-third the price of traditional therapy. Treatment options are available with or without insurance. Our listeners are going to receive an exclusive 50% off your first month of therapy by going to Cerebral.com slash hills. That's Cerebral.com slash hills for 50% off your first month of therapy. For quality mental health care that's accessible and affordable, join Cerebral today. What did you think of all the drama that Lauren would tell you in all those scenes? Because you weren't always there for it, but you'd always hear about it. And I know you always have the best, like, you know, reactions because, you know, it's like, whoa, like that really happened or that's, you know, I remember just some of the looks on your face. You're just like, what? She did that? I know. The hard part was, and you guys may be surprised, but like 
I feel like the producers always wanted me to be on Lauren's side, you know, like they always, I think like that's where the storyline always was going. Like they wanted the viewer to kind of be on Lauren's side. And so sometimes it was frustrating for me because I was like, I sort of knew what was going on a little bit behind the scenes. And I was like, I, w- I want to really ask like what your role in this is, you know, and like dive a little deeper with Lauren about like the role she played, but they never really wanted me to like go there with it. Um, but yeah, like I, I was always getting Lauren's side of the story. And then I think after a while, I kind of, it became like a taking sides thing. And I, even though I didn't even technically ever say I was on a side because I never even really knew the truth of like the situation. But I think just because of how it appeared on camera it was it was like seemed like I was just like so obvious team Lauren, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have a question for you, Whitney. So yeah. You became the Lauren of your own show. You became the city. And obviously having now her perspective of like having to carry the show on your back and you know, at that point, even though everybody's up, it's a team thing and, and we all put in a little uh, grain of salt into this. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, if the city failed, it was Whitney failed. Yeah, totally. So how do you feel like, do you feel more for Lauren now being, having been part of this? And all that pressure. Right. Yes. Yes. A hundred percent. Like there is so much pressure to perform. And I think that that, and to like just be game to go with things and to always be like the, know that people are always going to try to like slip you up um yes i definitely have like so much empathy for that and i think that that's why i our show like didn't last maybe as long as lauren's like because i couldn't continue i couldn't continue to like produce the drama like i just couldn't um I couldn't deal with it. Like it was too anxiety inducing for me. So I think that like she probably, she she had like a way tougher shell than I did. You had some, there were some characters around you though that really brought the drama on the city too, right? Like Yeah, there were, yeah, there was like Olivia who definitely brought the drama, a drama um, and, and Aaron, but it was like nowhere near Hill's size drama. Yeah. Like West Side versus East Side, West Coast East. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. It was like Uptown versus Downtown. It was not a real thing. Yeah, (laughs) because I remember we did film a lot. Like we filmed a party at your at your apartment or your condo in Beverly Hills a few times. Yeah, Um, but we never really showed that. Yeah, they never showed a lot of the things of all of us doing stuff together. So they maybe that's why they knew that you know they kind of wanted to keep you separate for the city. Maybe. I have no idea. I think what happened was like, from my perspective, we were filming for the Hills in New York and I had met this guy on camera who I actually really liked. Um, And I think the producers saw like there could be something there. And I think my storyline like needed something on the Hills. It was like, what's going to be the next step for Whitney? And the Hills was doing really well at that time. So Adam was probably like, we should do something else and let's let's like send Whitney to New York and follow this like possible relationship. And they had us this, they had like it all on tape already, you know? So I think it was just like an easy next step for them. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't think that I'm like cut out for reality TV. I mean, like you guys saw that when we tried to do the Hills New Beginnings, it was just like, so it was so hard for me. I don't know why I just would like tense up every time coming to fe- the film. Gosh, the Hills New Beginnings. The only thing that helps me, and I'm going to admit it, was alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. The I things know. that we were being asked to, to do and say, I was like, all right, let me have a drink and I'll do it. Oh, were you guys relieved when that was over? Oh, yeah. I yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> I wanted out. Had, yeah. Had you guys done it? Had Would you guys do it more again if it were like a different production team or... Like, or were you guys just all over it? 
I think it's ran its course, right? Yeah, I was like, there's nothing else to tell or say. And all of us, and as you know, what it's like, we were all so on to the producers and what they were trying to finagle and manipulate. Yeah, it was so hard to like get anywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And everyone like kind of lives such separate lives now. It wasn't like everyone's in each other's lives like 24 seven. Yeah, and then on top of that, when you have kids, you know, that's a whole nother layer to it. So yeah. Yeah. Maybe maybe if they followed sort of that path of us and not and not, hey, it's time for you to go back to Hollywood and go out to the clubs and stuff. I mean they Right. They right. What we were really doing in our actual lives. So yeah. I feel like that wasn't pitched to like that's what we thought it was going mm-hmm. to be when it was originally pitched to us. And then all of a sudden it's it was like, different. let's go meet out at a table. And you're like, What? I would never do that. <laughs> Like they said that they were going to bring in the younger generation and sort of had, we had Brandon Lee, which was great, but they said they were going to have a whole cast of younger, you know, people on and we were going to come in and out of the show. So it just, yeah. I think everybody got a different story, Brody. I think everybody got pitched differently. Like for me, it was when they first called me and they were like talking to me about how they saw the hills coming back. It was more like, hey, listen, we've all grown up. We are, we're all not in that like dramatic fucking lifestyle anymore. Yeah how you guys are have evolved and what you do for a living and what you're doing for a living is still like in the same business that you used to do, but a little bit more evolved. So we want to see you in your element of business. We want to see Brody, how he's touring and being a DJ and, and how he balances his life with his Malibu world. Yeah. Same with like, he was, they were just kind of pitching me like what they were going to, how they were trying to pitch the show. And I think that at that point, and I think everybody's right. Everybody said yes for that reason because they were like, "Oh, they're gonna shine a bright light, right? Good stuff." And on the on the on the on the, a positive situation, that yeah, this could have been a great show if we just kind of did what we really do for a living, what we really right, do life, not like just sit around and like talk bad about each other. Well, it's also because COVID. You know, we did start filming kind of halfway through was- COVID, but we had to like stay apart and film outside only it was so crazy yeah that's so, true so that's true two, i think season two was more like i only did season two because i guess we all needed the money at that point and i think yeah. not having a job and having that as a, our job be i guess we and i was sick of not seeing everybody i thought that was cool to just be able to hang out with you guys and and we were all safe and we were all non like they like they took the right precautions to be able to film with each other. So right, we're the first people I hung out with in eight months. Right, yeah. right, right. And Whitney, you were always you carried yourself so well all the time and so like well spoken and thanks. you know like I feel like elegant and classy. you did well. <laughs> oh, thanks, guys. I mean, yeah, I just feel like I um, it's so weird looking back on it. I I wish I like knew how I did that, but I think because. I wasn't really ever trying to be famous. So I wasn't like trying to insert myself in storylines or like I wasn't being pushed around by the producers to like do or say things. And they knew, they knew that I wasn't really game for that. And I think that's also the reason why the city didn't last for more than like one and a half seasons was just because like I couldn't, I couldn't be like, manipulated anymore. So June Shine is one of my favorite go-to adult beverage options. I personally love June Shine just because they offer a variety of options, flavors. There's something for everybody, especially with summer around the corner with all the barbecues and pool parties and going to the beach. And guess what, guys? June Shine now makes canned cocktails, margaritas, vodka sodas, and rum cocktails at 8 to 10% ABV, that's one and a half shots made with premium ingredients that taste amazing and have no added sugar. Unlike your traditional canned cocktails that typically have 20 grams plus of sugar, tons of calories, and cheap liquor. It's made with only real premium ingredients, and unlike most alcoholic beverages, they are transparent about every ingredient they put in their products. Some of my favorites are the spicy mango, the passionate vodka soda, and a good Mai Tai. And best of all, it doesn't leave you with that I just drank a lot of sugar feeling and gives you a lighter, brighter buzz. With 4th of July just around the corner, why not make a big splash at that barbecue you're going to by bringing some of these insanely delicious, better-for-you alcohol? 
June Shine can be found in over 10,000 stores across the country. It's available at all the retailers you're already visiting for groceries and alcohol, like Whole Foods, Target, Ralph's, Vons, Albertsons, Kroger, Wegmans, Total Wine, BevMo, Safeway, and more. We've worked out a special offer for our listeners. At any store, you can buy one June Shine package and get the second for only a penny. That's 12 to $20 in value. I personally recommend trying one of their best-selling variety packs. It's a great way to try all of their delicious flavors. Just go to juneshine.com slash hills, text them a photo of your receipt, and they'll Venmo you immediately. It's that easy. That's J-U-N-E-S-H-I-N-E dot com slash hills. Breathe some life into your own backyard with fastgrowingtrees.com this spring. From shade to fresh fruit to privacy and natural beauty, let FastGrowingTrees.com help you plant your dream garden with their expert advice and fast, reliable shipping. FastGrowingTrees.com's plant experts curate thousands of easy-to-grow plant, shrub, and tree varieties for your unique climate. Meyer lemons to evergreens and everything in between. Happy plants, happy home, right? But sometimes it's hard to know which plants will do best. No problem, because with fastgrowingtrees.com, you get customized recommendations based on your specific needs. Plus, their plant experts are always available to help keep your plants growing healthy through the season and beyond. Uh, I love fast growing trees. I have tons of areas on my property that need privacy. I need fruit trees that grow in the shade. Uh, the list goes on and on, and this company is incredible for that. So I'm a huge Fast Growing Tree supporter. Love it. Join over 1.5 million happy Fast Growing Tree customers like myself. Go to fastgrowingtrees.com slash the hills now to get 15% off your entire order. Get 15% off at fastgrowingtrees.com slash the hills. Do you talk to anyone? Who else do you talk to from the hills or the city? that you're still in contact with? Um, I talk, I talked to Kelly Catrone. Um, I like talk to Roxy here and there. Um, and then that's like kind of it. Like I obviously I married a producer. Um, that's right. You actually married the producer from the yeah, city, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and like, I'm more keep in touch with a lot of the, the crew, like Spike and Gary. I don't know if you remember. Oh, you them. still talk to Spike? Yeah. I love Spike. Spike's the best. Yeah. Really yeah. Nice. yeah. Wait, we yeah. need to get Spike on the show. I know you guys should. <laughs> He's like an exec now at, at a network. I don't know. I think at Fox maybe. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, send us his info. We'll just yeah. ask if he'd like to come on. I will for sure. For sure. It's always just interesting hearing the producer's perspective whenever things would go down at the club and we'd get mad or storm out or didn't want to film and just like what they were going through. Yeah, I know. Did any of them have any like breakthroughs like or feel guilty about anything afterwards or not really? Not yet. I don't know. Yeah. Right, Brody? I don't think so. At the end of the day, they're trying to make a TV show. Yeah. If you guys could go back again, like and redo it all, would you do it again? Would you do it? Yeah, probably. Yeah. It was a fun experience. At that age, I think for, for that age, it was fun. It was like something exciting and new. And you know, I know Spencer and I were all, we were super involved with reality television at that time, whether it was Princes of Malibu or... Yeah. It was, that was sort of that phase in our life was, was doing that. So, I mean, I would have done it again. I mean, probably, yeah. And Whitney, you knew Spencer. Didn't you guys go to school together? Yeah. At yeah. So I was sandwiched in between uh, Stephanie and Spencer at Crossroads. Uh, Spencer was a year older and Stephanie was a year younger. Um, okay. So yeah, I like didn't know him well at all, but I knew like of him and everything. Um, yeah, but I haven't, I haven't chatted with them. I spoke with Heidi last on the text message chain, but um yeah, do you guys, yeah. I'm, I mean, you guys do the show with them. So obviously all is good there. Yeah. I mean, Brody's, that's Spencer. You guys are still super close. And then I saw Heidi last or two Saturdays ago, I think. How's she doing? I mean, I feel like I'm asking you guys questions now. <laughs> <laughs> She's doing good, you know, with the baby and just mom life. And yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Good. <laughs> but, um, do you still talk to Lauren at all? Not really. No. Um, 
No, we like chatted a little bit over COVID and caught up, but yeah, I feel like she left Los Angeles and, um, and just like everyone else, like went, went on her own way, like mm-hmm. her own path. And maybe you guys keep in touch with her or not, but I feel like our relationship was really show based, you know, yeah. like we weren't, we weren't super, super close outside of the show. So when the show ended there, we weren't necessarily like, like yearning to continue that relationship. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think from watching the show, would you wish now like that you were more involved or you more, or that you like inserted yourself more on the Hills or are you happy with like what there is left? No. No. Yeah. I think I'm happy with what there is. Like, I think I remember, I remember watching the show and being like, Oh, I wish I was on it more just because like, I think I was like self-involved. Um, but looking back on it, I feel like I'm really happy with the level that I was able to maintain, like, and the boundaries I was able to yeah. set. Cause I feel like that's very rare in reality TV to be able to do that. Still gain that exposure you got from the show and be as minimalistic as you could have been on the show. Yeah, for sure. I think now it's all about like maintaining relevancy, as I'm sure you guys can understand, you know, and like continuing to try different things to, continued to like grow as a person and also like as a career woman, but there's really nothing like the exposure of like a a network TV show. You know what I I mean? Like it's, yeah. Well, and you were really into fashion. Like that's what you really wanted to do. So are you still, do you have a line out right now or what are you up to now? So right now I'm just doing collaboration. So I have a collaboration with Rent the Run Rent the Runway. I do two seasons a year with them. Nice. Um yeah, I started my line when we were filming The City and then I started it with my dad who um had grown up in the fashion space, the business around it. And then once my he passed away, um I just like couldn't continue to do it anymore without him. It was too difficult. And I'm sure you guys understand, like having gone through, like built different businesses and whatnot, how much pressure that can be. And it was like all on me. And I was putting everything that I made from the show into the business. And then like family was working for it and it was just way too much. So I just had to like, um, pull the plug on it, which was so hard, but also like the biggest, gift ever. And now I feel like I've been, um, lucky enough to be able to do these collaborations Mm -hmm. where I'm still like able to be creative, but I don't have to like run the whole business or back end or anything, which I'm like not capable of doing. I'm not either. I tried. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's hard. You get it. Yeah. 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 And you have one son, Sunny, and then do you plan on having any more kids? Are you done? So we are like going down the surrogacy road. Um, I actually like getting pregnant with Sunny was no problem. Like didn't, wasn't even really trying. But then once I had Sunny, just like had multiple miscarriages. And I think it was, there was some even happening while we were like filming probably. Um, and I just decided after like make a long story short that I, it was just too much for me. It was becoming I, like I had hit a, a, a rock bottom, um, yeah. emotionally and physically. So now we are, are hopefully like cross our fingers using a surrogate, but nothing has been, um, she had the transfer hasn't happened yet. So, oh. but we just like, um, have found someone and yeah. That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I just feel like I didn't, I didn't know if I wanted more than one. Um, after it was like, I was trying so, so, so hard. I was like, Oh, maybe just one is enough. And then the more and more I thought about it, I was like, I, I, I'm one of five kids. Like I just really want a sibling for Sunny and you guys all know the power of siblings. Like you guys come from enormous families. Um, and I just didn't want to look back and have any regrets either, which I think I would have, like, if I didn't go the next step. Mm-hmm. I think that's great. Are you going to follow that journey or let people know what it's like to have a surrogate? So yeah. I know, don't you have a YouTube channel? Or, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I will. I feel like I'm kind of like 
keeping it sacred a little bit for now. I'm like happy to talk about it and tell people that that's, that those are my plans, but I just don't, I'm not like openly having conversations in places where people can leave opinions like, because I'm just not ready for that yet. And I kind of want it to happen before I have those conversations, but I'm definitely like logging things and, and journaling things so that I can then once like all is kind of set and done, talk about the process. Cause I feel like people will be really interested to know what that looks like. Yeah, that is really cool. You were probably one of the first people out there that started rewatching shows, which was the Hills. And I know people, a lot of people were made it a thing between us doing this and you doing it. But I know. So silly. (laughs) We do give you the respect of like, you were the, you were like, uh, before anybody was doing these shows, you were the first one to start doing these type of shows. Well, we were so bored in COVID and we didn't know what to do. And so we were like, let's do this. And then we started doing it to the Hills new beginnings. And then I think like, that's when maybe Spencer and Heidi started getting upset, started getting upset with me or like taking it personally or stuff. Oh, I think there was a few people that got, yeah, I remember that now. I think Ashley remember? got offended Oh, yes, too. yes, was, yeah. yes, yes. Something silly that I said. Producer to me from that show and being like, did you see what she said about you guys? Yeah. Or, like, like they tried to make me be mad at, at the situation, and I, and then they got me because I'm like, why would you do that? Like, like I'm like, yeah, I don't know, man. Maybe you should ask her what, why, why she would do that. And it's kind of like that was what the manipulating thing. It's the only time that I ever felt like I'm like, what, what did I ever do to her? To talk to totally, me? <laughs> yeah. Like, watching it on the actual on the on your YouTube channel, you're doing it like in a funny, like. Non-dramatic. It's not malicious. Yeah. No. And like you guys know now as you guys are doing this, like you're talking about people, you know, like you're sharing opinions. Um, And so I think that that so that like then I got super scared and stopped doing it and then went back in time and started doing like the original Hills. Um, And we've done the Hill, all the seasons of the Hills. We've done Laguna Beach. We've done the city and we're doing Siesta Key right now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I know. A lot of couch time. <laughs> yeah. Is it cringy for you to watch? I find it cringy. Some of these scenes, I'm like, I can't, I can't oh even my watch God. this. <laughs> so cringy. So, so, so cringy. Um, but you also know how much like the they got chopped up, you yeah, know, on the editing yeah. floor. So you try to like not try to tell yourself that. But yeah, it feels like a different lifetime. Yeah, we do get a lot of like fans calling in saying that, you know, when they watched it 15 years ago, they had a whole different mindset and um, emotions toward it. And now yeah. rewatching it again, it's like their whole perspective has changed on certain people on the show and like how they should have acted or how things should have went. And it's crazy to hear. I know. I know. It is crazy. And I feel like on my, on our YouTube, like Timmy definitely has some unpopular opinions, um, which like, (laughs) I think, yeah, rile people up a little bit, but he had, he had the same thing happen. Like he watched it and he was like, there were certain things where he was like, I don't know about this. Like, yeah. So, um, I think once you have like a mature look at stuff, you're able to maybe see what was actually going on. But all these kids were so young watching us and so impressionable. Yeah. Well, yeah. and now there's so many reality shows. Yeah. That people kind of know that not everything is as is real. Yeah. yeah. Totally. I know. Everyone doesn't everyone still always ask you, like the first question they ask is like, was it real? And yes. you're just like, you're just like, can you like really st- like still like, you know, it was not, you know, that we weren't, we were not given scripts, but that there had to be people involved. Like there weren't cameras around us 24 seven, like stuff had to get set up, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, that's why we called this. Was it real? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that, that is the number one question always asked. It's, and, and the truth of it is like aspects of it are and aspects of it weren't like there were storylines that were there were things that that happened that really happened. But like people's reactions to it changed because it was now on a TV show. People's reactions to it like had to magnify because it was on a TV show. 
You had to like care about things that you wouldn't normally care about. It was like the fact that all these things were happening while a TV show was, was filming it in and of itself is like proof that it's not like entirely real. real you yeah. Know? yeah. Like, yeah. I have this book. It was from first season. It was of me, you, Lauren, Heidi, and they took stories of all of our lives. They must have sat us down and like interviewed us, but there's like, I'm going to send you a few photos of it. Yeah. It's funny. That's... I was sitting there. I found it the other day going through old boxes and I was like, That's oh so my, cute. I wonder if they know that they remember this is out there. Oh my God. Yeah. Cute. And like photos of us, like candid photos from clubs and just random stuff we must have sent to the producers or MTV to add oh in the my book. God. Yeah. I mean, we had a lot of fun up until like Heidi and Lauren couldn't necessarily like be around each other anymore. Yeah. I feel like we were having a lot of fun, everybody together. Yeah. <laughs> I know it was. Yeah. Gosh. Well, and then on the new, the Hills New Beginnings, you were on the first season a little bit. And then the second you were in and out. Yeah, the, I was on the first season a little bit. And then the second, I feel like I tried to do it a little bit and then was like, this isn't really feeling right. Um, yeah. And then like COVID stuff was happening. And yeah, I just felt like I, there wasn't really a place for me there. And I was just having too much anxiety leading up to it for like no reason. Because like no one was trying to start shit with me. Like, and I wasn't trying to start shit with people. I was just there because I think I was a familiar face for like the Hills viewers. But for some reason, I always just thought someone was going to start some something with me. I don't know why. Like, wasn't well, that, that's how I, I think that's how we all felt sometimes yeah. walking into a scene, you never know yeah. who or what is going to happen, but it's right. like you're on guard ready for whatever. Right. I guess when I was filming the Hills and I was showing up, like I always kind of knew what I was showing up for. And in the city, I didn't really get like, like surprise much, but I don't know. In the Hills New Beginnings, it just felt like the Wild West. Like you just didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah. So yeah. crazy. Are you guys in the uh, recording studio in Malibu right now? Yes. Frankie and I are, yeah. Yeah, me and Brody are. And nice. Are. Yeah, the, such a nice backdrop. Brandon yeah. did such a good job. Malibu, the hill is Malibu. The oh hill. my God. <laughs> So cool. I know. Originally, we were like, oh, it'd be so cool if we could all be in the studio together and then go to Nobu after and catch up and have I some know, tricks. I know. I know. I know. Well, Frankie and I literally live down the street from each other. Like, I could ride my bike to his house. Do you guys see each other a lot? No, I never see him, ever. I would think that we would oh, run golf. into each other. He golf? He's obsessed. He's playing right now. Like, he's currently right now playing in a tournament. Um. Where, where does he call, golf at? Does he, he have yeah, he's a member at Al Caballero. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure he would love to golf with you if yeah, he I wanted. I to the spot right by my house. So I'll, I'll invite him to play. And then maybe you and Jen and the kids can come over and just all of us can have a little lunch. And That would be so fun. Sonny would die. He's like such a little only child right now. Just like wants to be around other kids. He's so lonely. Yeah. I That's like Kira. Yeah, right? <laughs> like always wants a play date. Like needs to know what's happening every day. Like what are the plans? Yeah. Yeah. It's, but I'm like that too. Like I have to do something all the time. So it's kind of... We do stuff all the time and keep busy. <laughs> I'm like the opposite now. I'm such a homebody. Really? <laughs> don't want to leave the house. Yeah. Gosh. Well, is there anything else you want to add about the hills or your experience? Or is there anything that you wish never made or that you wish did make the show? Um, I just remember filming at the time, like when I fell live on TV oh, on Good that's... Morning America. Yeah. Like that was the one moment for me that I couldn't control. Like that was just so embarrassing. Like I literally locked myself in my room for 24 hours and cried for a day after that. And, and I thought for a second, like my stupid brain, I was like, wait, there's a chance that they like didn't catch it, you know, like that the Hills or that the Hills cameras aren't going to be able to use like the footage from the Good Morning America cameras or like there's a chance. And I was so deranged, like thinking that it wasn't going to make it or, uh, and then I also thought, I was like, oh, no one's going to care about this. Like, this isn't going to be a storyline that anyone's going to care about. 
But anyways, I, yeah, I was so mortified. I was so, so, so mortified. And now I look back and I'm like, God, it wasn't really that big of a deal. But like at the time, oh my God, I was dying. Yeah. But you fell very gracefully and you got right back up. Oh my God. (laughs) I like, it was just instinctual. I didn't know what to do, but I just like burst into tears as soon as the camera stopped rolling. Yeah. And do you remember the super intern, Emily? Yeah, of course. Well, she's who was standing next to me, like modeling in the dress next to me at the time. Yeah. And she's now like, well, she was um, CEO or founder of Glossier. And then she like stepped down recently, but yeah. Wow. Cause yeah, yeah they kind of made her in the show. They try to give her a certain like super boss or like her and Lauren like competition. competition. Yes, yeah, totally. Like this, this like East coast, like power in turn versus like the yeah. West coast, like chill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But was it really like that or that was just show? No, honestly, she was actually pretty intense. Like, oh. and they, she was, she was like, she was intense. It wasn't as the cameras would stop rolling and we would have like norm, like nice chatter conversation, but she really was like an intense workaholic, like yeah. person like that. Yeah. Thank you so much, Whitney. Bye guys. Bye. 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 Bye guys. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching. Please follow, rate, and review Was It Real? The Hills Rewatch wherever you listen to your podcast. If you guys are a listener, remember you can always watch every episode on YouTube and Spotify, and you can listen to exclusive bonus content plus ad-free episodes by signing up at castmedia.com slash cast plus. That's cast with a K, media.com slash cast plus. See you guys next week. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Be sure to start with the pilot episode and catch all of our episode recaps.